The past two and a half years, Sierra Space has aggressively moved forward to certify systems for our habitation. One of the areas we've really focused on is soft goods. Now that we're approaching the certification of the pressure shell and we understand its architecture, we can start moving on to the shield. The shield is all of this material that goes external to the restraint layer to protect against micrometeoroids and orbital debris. So all of this material gets oriented like this, external to the restraint layer, to protect against projectiles. It covers the entire surface area of life, and so it's an enormous amount of material that goes into this protection. We're going down to White Sands Test Facility to utilize their hypervelocity impact testing gun through the CCSE2 campaign to further our understanding of our shield. Sierra Space gets to leverage NASA's experience and their expertise, their facilities, and in return, NASA gets insight into Sierra Space's objectives and development efforts. We've done a series of test shots out there where basically they fire a projectile really fast at our soft goods stack up layers and we see how our soft goods are able to protect and shield against those micrometeoroids and orbital debris. Historically, Whipple shields or stuffed Whipple shields have been used. That's what's used on the International Space Station. Those are primarily metallic structures that protect incoming projectiles. What we're exploring is a flexible multi-shock shield. So there are ballistic fabrics that their purpose, they're basically sacrificial walls that shock the projectile as it's coming in. It gets shocked, it dissipates into you know, tons of fragments, then it gets hit again, it gets hit again, it gets hit again. And by the time it gets to our rear wall, no damage is gonna occur. Through CCSC2, we have 31 shots allocated for this campaign. We're gonna take the first half of those shots to switch up our materials and aerial densities to see which shield performs the best. After that, we're going to pick a flight-like structure and keep our materials the same and switch out the gun parameters to develop an equation that will fully characterize the performance of that shield. So we're at the NASA Remote Hypervelocity Test Lab in Las Cruces, New Mexico, which is the remote testing facility for the agency to do all shielding validation efforts for all human-rated spaceflight missions. The purpose of this facility is to compare with real data what the analytical models are predicting various shielding or spacecraft structures might endure when they are impacted by space debris. The two-stage light gas guns we have in this lab are incredibly important for the safety of crewed spaceflight. Micrometeorite risks are ever-growing and they are always there. We've been putting people into space for 60 years now, so we have a pretty good idea of how to design space food and space toilets, but there's always that lingering risk that you have a, an encounter with a micrometeorite while you are uh, on orbit. In order to perform these hypervelocity impact tests of spacecraft components, we of course have to launch the projectiles at essentially orbital velocity, which means for low Earth orbit, about seven kilometers per second, which equates to uh, 16,000 miles per hour. That's rather fast. Uh, just for reference, a normal rifle bullet might be going perhaps one kilometer per second, so it's seven times faster than that. And with these two-stage light gas guns, we can verify that the shielding we design to prevent uh, catastrophic results from impacts by those micrometeorites can hold up to those sorts of threats. Real-world testing is super important to help characterize this shield. Simulations can only take you so far, so it's really important to understand how your shield is actually performing under these types of parameters. So shooting these guns, every time we, we get a shot off, we get a really important data point that we're able to plot. On this test specifically, we're looking at that very final layer that's right against the restraint layer. We refer to that as our rear wall. If there's not any light coming through it, then we can determine there's no perforation on the rear wall. And that is considered a pass to us. Failure is super important when we're doing these tests. Originally, you want to see failures. You want to understand the limit of your shield. If you're never seeing a failure, you're, you're certainly over-engineered. So in the beginning when we were seeing failures, it's pretty good to understand that because now we can strategically add mass and aerial density to get to a point where we're right on the line of passing all of our safety requirements, but we didn't add too much mass to the system. 
after many tests of tweaking things and adding mass here and taking away mass there, we were able to come away with a shield that performs really well. It is super efficient. And we really think we understand how the materials are performing in our stack. Shielding is crucial for protecting human life. So we want to make sure we have the best shield that we can while making sure that it is actually of low enough mass that we can get it to space safely without sacrificing many of those other features that we want in Space Station. The advancement of soft goods and reaching soft goods certification, there's very, very few companies which have been able to do this in the world. We are now on the precipice of having this completed for our pressure shell. And then over the next year and a half, we will complete the entire soft goods system. With all of the fantastic results from the pressure shell, it's been awesome to be on a team that is pushing our layers towards certification. We have fantastic results from the MMOD shield and we're really excited to see life in orbit one day.